Hey, it's Steve Mignogna here at Burniston Auto Wrecking in Burniston, Massachusetts, doing the junkyard crawl with a 1973 Dodge B300 camper van. Now, we all know that the A100 van was Dodge's first modern cab forward van, 64 through 70, but for 71, the B series arrived, and for the very first time in a Dodge van, had an opening hood and front access to the engine. Got to say, we have to give credit to this idea to Ford, which in 1968 came out with the second gen Econoline, and by the mid-70s, Ford really went crazy with half pickup truck, half van with the really long nose Econoline vans of like 74, 75. And it's almost a truck, it's almost a van. But again, the Dodge version of that was similar, but shorter. We can see right here clearly that's not nearly as much proboscis as the Ford. But with that said, they kind of copied Ford and for good reason. So did Chevrolet, by the way, when they copied or came up with their second gen van too. Now this one here, uh, we can see this one has electronic ignition, which was standard in 1973 on all vans except for the B300, the one tonners, this was optional. And again, the electronic control box right there got rid of the uh, points in the distributor and gave better uh, fuel economy and better spark and, and not as readily out of tune. But again, this one's a small block. There was also a 440 engine available from 76 on up, but as a 1973, this is strictly 318 or 360. This is a 360, we know that because the harmonic balancer right here has this eccentric D weight on it, which is a function of the external balanced cast crank that's found inside of every 360. The 318s had a forged crank, which was internally balanced and didn't have that eccentric. So that's a quick way to tell a 318 from a 360 in a junkyard. And it's another clue we'll come up with in a second or two. Now this one is a B300 one ton van. It's got the eight lug, 16 and a half inch wheels, heavy duty underpinnings on this thing. No five lug stuff here like you'd see on a B100 half ton van. Now again, this has coil spring front suspension, as did all B series vans, no more beam axles from Dodge vans after 1970. And one thing we noticed too, of course, is uh, it's fairly austere inside, but getting back to the camper van, some important stickers are seen. Now this here is the Dodge certification and specification tag right here. We see the fifth digit is F for 360 two barrel. And right down here for the rear axle, it's a 6,200 pound axle, which means this one has the dually rear axle, uh, a part of its camper van conversion. And speaking of that conversion, this second sticker up here, it says made by Starcraft Company, date of manufacture, January, February of 73. The vehicle was built by Chrysler in December of 72, but again, it was sent to Starcraft in, I believe it's uh, Indiana, for conversion. Now here's the thing, Starcraft was first founded in 1903. They made farm equipment and then rowboats, wood, aluminum, and then fiberglass. And then by 1964, they were poised to begin building camper vans. And uh, this is a Starcraft, which is America's oldest continuously operating manufacturer of van conversions and camper vans. Now this one being a B300 with the 6,200 pound rear axle, that's a dually right there. We can see it has twin wheels on the back, 16.5 inch diameter rims. And these rims, the old days of the split rims are long gone. These are one, well, they're multi-piece rims, but they're riveted together to stay together. Here are the rivets right here. And this is the uh, full floating Dana 70 rear axle. And we can see right here down low, this is the tube or the air access for the inboard wheel clipped here to the outside so you can fill the inboard tire. Otherwise, you'd be kind of screwed, and literally. So there's actually two air valves on these, inboard and outboard. But again, Dana 70 rear axle on the B300 with a 6,200 pound rear axle. And you're gonna need that too, because at one point in time, there was a large fiberglass Starcraft camper on top of this frame. So, so I'll go around the other side, Shane, and we'll meet you there and take a further look inside. Now the seats on this one may look like the Bostrom seats that you'd find like an A100 for like Hemis and stuff like that. Well, they're not the same. A lot of guys go to the junk car and say, well, I found a Dodge van with bucket seats. They're small. I'll put them on my, my Hemi Dart replica. No, these are different. They're actually tapered. These are made by Bostrom, but they're quite a different. They're an evolution of the Bostrom thin line as found in like Hemi 64 and 5 Mopar, 68 Hemi Dart and Barracuda, and Jeep CJs. Uh, but again, these are not the same thing. They're similar, but not the same. Uh, but this one, of course, is uh, an automatic. No uh, manual transmissions, of course, uh, in the B300. Well, you could actually get a floor shifted manual if you wanted, but here, this would have been a column torque flight. The pedal right there, it's kind of interesting. The industrial grade paint, the brake pedal was 
painted with the cab and everything inside of here in one shot at the Dodge factory. And uh, it's interesting to see how kind of austere this is. Uh, padded dash on top. But again, all these knobs and stuff are all strictly analog on this one. Now, getting back to this 360 engine, <clears throat> while it looks very much like a 318 externally, one thing we can always tell, the 360 has a two-barrel carburetor in, in this mode here, but it's a larger two-barrel with a bigger footprint than the 318 two-barrel, which is a much smaller carburetor. So when you see this big air horn here versus the smaller one on the 318, you can tell 360, 318. Now you know. Otherwise, they're kind of the same to look at. But uh, <clears throat> the, the big difference, of course, is 360 inches versus 318. I'll take the 360 any day. Now, this is a 1978 Dodge van dealer brochure. But something in the back of this thing here is, is important. 1973 was the first year for something called the Dodge Carry Van, right there. And we can see, basically, this is Dodge's half van, half truck. The beauty of the Carry Van was it was low. It could fit into some garages, but again, the bones of the Carry Van, the cab and chassis, are what was sent off to StarCraft to be made into a camper conversion. Now, unlike the carry van cargo beast that we see right here, which has a full roof, when these were sent to car StarCraft, StarCraft trimmed out this area right here for the above the cab sleeping compartment that would be used and needed on a uh, camper. But again, this was born as a carry van platform minus the box and then sent off to StarCraft for full completion. But again, a one-ton Dodge van, something that probably in 1964 they weren't even thinking of. They were all strictly half-ton and three-quarters with the big springs and the, you know, the small axles, five-lug wheels. But for 1971, Dodge got really serious about heavy-duty vans, including the one-tonner like this thing right here with a dually rear axle. And again, 1976, the 440 could be had in these things. So uh, these big Dodge vans were, were not just workhorses. They could be a rolling home as this StarCraft motorhome at one point was. So that's the story of this puppy in the junkyard right here. Is there any hope for it? Well, the 360 is kind of appealing. I don't know, you can make that into a 408 or something with a stroker crank, or just build it and enjoy it. Make about the same power as a 350 Chevy does, but again, nothing like a 57 Hemi or an LS engine. So these 360s are kind of being overlooked these days. This is still probably okay. The torque flight's gone, no more tranny in this thing, but the heavy duty torque flights used in motor homes and one ton and three quarter ton vans have bigger parts inside and they're kind of desirable. Somebody got it already. Different tail shaft on it, but the guts are the same and could be used in a bracket dart or something like that. So anyway, but that's the story of this fairly austere 1973 Dodge B300 former camper van. Now it's got a heck of a skylight. Nice place, lots of good view of the sky. But anyway, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steam Mag's YouTube channel and come back tomorrow for more Junkyard Calling here at Ferguson Auto Rental.